So Baphomet is the devil, right? Well, in a very specifically subjective way, yes, but it's a little more complicated than that. So stick around because you're gonna like this. But if you're new here, hi, my name is Ilian. I wrote a master's on alchemy, occultism, and Jungian dream analysis. I'm writing a totally unrelated PhD about Palestinian political identity. And I'm a writer, teacher, tarot reader, and cat. Go with it. Now, first of all, Baphomet is a French word, specifically a French crusader word. And one of the earliest recorded usages of the term comes to us from the French crusader Anselme de Ribemont. At the end of the 11th century, after the first crusade, Ribemont wrote a letter about the siege of Antioch. So I'm going to read you the part that mentions Baphomet. As the next day dawned, they called loudly upon Baphomet. And we prayed silently in our hearts to God. Then we attacked and forced all of them outside the city walls. Okay, let's unpack. First of all, where is Antioch? Southern Turkey, located at what is currently Antakya. And who are they? Who are the inhabitants of Antioch in the 11th century? The Muslims. And who is this Baphomet that they call upon? Someone the French would also call Mahomet. But Ilyan, Knights Templars were also accused of worshipping Baphomet. Now first of all, the Knights Templars were accused of a lot of shit. Most of all because they didn't do what the church wanted, which was to save Jerusalem from the heathen idol worshippers, the Muslims. But as the city's protectors, the Templars essentially lived among the Muslim Arabs. And they probably ended up incorporating some Islamic practices into their own religious beliefs. Big no-no for the church daddies. Now I've already talked a little bit about the prominence of Islamophobia throughout Christian history. The fact that they felt the need to save Jerusalem from the Muslims should give you a good enough idea about the extent of this phobia. Now, of course, the word save has its rhetorical function, because then the Crusades are less of an invasion and more of a redemption. The same way an imperial military might be called a defense force, because then it appears to exist for the purpose of protection rather than oppression. Now, like I said before, the church did a lot of work to paint the Muslims in the worst light possible. They went as far as having medieval European Christians believe that Muslims worshipped Muhammad as a god. To this day, the word Mamet, derived from Mahomet, means a false god in English. Talk about subconscious programming. There were actual songs sung by medieval Christians about the false idol worshippers of Islam. They didn't call them Muslims, they called them Mohammedans. They worshipped Baphomet in the Baphomaria. Baphomaria is supposed to be the mosque. And just a little side note, so you can see how deep the programming really runs. Someone commented on one of my first videos about the Qur'an that their parents told them that the Qur'an was the devil's Bible. Duh, it's the book of Baphomet. Later on, the idea of Baphomet gets merged with another Islamophobic stereotype. That the Arabs have no trouble being intimate with goats. Now this fun little rumor comes to us from one of the grandfathers of Western racism against the East, Herodotus, who talked about the worship of the goat of Mendes. Mendes is the Greek word for the Egyptian city Jedet, known in ancient Egypt as Bir Banet Jedet, the place of the ram god of Jedet. And the ram was one of the three chief deities of Jedet. Technically, he's the Ba of one of the three lords. The Ba being the soul. He is the Ba of Osiris. With his consort Isis and his son Horus, they are the triad of Mendes. And Herodotus said that not only did they worship this goat god, they worshipped goats themselves. They held goats in such high standard that women would sleep with them publicly. And of course, I mean, over the centuries, people just ran with, like, you have full-on books and codices, scholars who take themselves very seriously, writing things like this. Minor and Devos comment that amongst Arab tribal cultures, bestiality with goats, sheep, or camels provides a good outlet. These practices... Havelock Ellis states that the Arabs, according to Kosher, chiefly practice bestiality with goats, sheep, and mares. But then this one goes farther out east. The Anamites, according to Mondier, commonly employ sows, and more especially among the young women, dogs. Okay, now we're on a bit of a tangent, but whatever, let's go back. Baphomet is the devil. But who is the devil? Well, in the Bible, he's no one. He's totally unmentioned. Not a word of him. In the book of Job, one of the sons of God is called the Satan. In 1 Samuel, King Saul is tormented by a troubling spirit. A spirit sent by Yahweh. So our God and Satan in cahoots are like, 
Because in the Chronicle, Yahweh sends his angel, again called the Satan, to give people a plague. For the most part, Satan in the Bible is everything God does but doesn't want to associate with. In Herodotus, the Persians and Assyrians and Egyptians, all of the others are everything that Greece is not. For example, Herodotus talks about how the Persians were obsessed with slaves. But Greece was almost single-handedly built by slaves. When Athens had a democracy, it was a democracy for the aristocrats who had slaves. Slaves who had no role in that democracy. While Persia is largely built by skilled workers and artisans. In medieval Europe, the Arabs were idolatrous devil worshippers. People who prayed to Baphomet and Allah instead of God. Even though Allah is God, is Yahweh, is El of Eli Eli Lama Shabaktani. Et voila, we get the horned figure of Baphomet, the goat of Mendes, convoluted with the false idol god Mahomet, who the Muslims never worshipped, by the way. All Muslims understand that no one is to be worshipped beside God. Islam is essentially the return to the Old Testament monodaddy Yahweh. It's a correction on the Christian trinitary nature of the divine. And it makes me think about the projection that's at play in the medieval Christian mind. Did they feel threatened that the Muslims re-venerated God as the All-Father, One alone in the sky, while they had essentially started to worship a man? A man born of a virgin, but a man no less. Is this not the epitome of idolatry? Was it guilt and shame of their own rituals that they projected onto the Muslim population? Because the Muslims have no trouble telling you the difference between Allah and Muhammad. God is the omnipresent, all-powerful, all-seeing, all wise Muhammad is his messenger. But can Christians tell us the difference? between God and Jesus?